Hey guys, welcome to this week's segment of RVW's Fire Chat. Today with me is Dalton Owen, one of our best sales consultants here. I'm Josh Durnell. A couple things that we're going to be going over with you uh, today in this uh, week's video is how to buy an RV safely. Now I know that may be um, uh, the wrong terminology to use, but what we do want to go over this week um, in specifically is mistakes to avoid okay yeah. there are a couple different things that um, we personally have seen many times in our experience um, and we just want to kind of bring those to light uh, a lot of dealerships choose to do things differently um, we're not going to pick on them but we're going to give you the tools and the resources to be able to overcome uh, those objections and know what deal you are actually getting versus showing up and there be surprises uh, during that purchase, right? So um, we'll, we'll, we'll get right into it, guys. I, I think the first and most important topic to, um, of the segment is knowing the comparison or the difference, if you will, of the advertised price and the out the door price. Dalton, what do you have to um, add to that? <clears throat> I mean, really, what is advertised price versus out the door price? I mean, Advertised price would be um, basically when I show up to look, work at, look at a camper, um, dealer A is, is showing, uh, you know, $10,000 for that camper. And that is their advertised sticker on the camper that you show up. And that's what grabs your attention as a customer. That's what the camper price is. Uh, whereas your out the door price is that camper, you know, the $10,000 plus whatever their fees are, plus uh, sales tax for whatever state, location, county sometimes if, if that applies to you. Um, you know, that's camper fees and taxes, you know, that's out the door price. So, well, and, and there's also a lot of cost associated to mm -hmm. doing business in this industry, right? Um, and, and, and we're going to just kind of go a, a little itemized line, not so much of which one, you know, being more important than the other one, but just trying to touch base on all of them that we see people be confused of or again can be a shock to them uh, when they go to arrive to pick up said camper. So um, I, I mean, we'll, I, I would say the first and, and uh, most important one to determine what your advertised price is and what you're actually paying out the door or financing for that matter will be the hidden fees. Mm -hmm. um, a couple that come to mind and then we'll kind of dive into each one of those specifically. Um, and, and if you've purchased a camper, I'm sure you've seen some of these on your uh, uh, purchase agreement and you're probably going to understand a little bit more why you shouldn't have been subject to those and, and what to do to avoid that from happening to you again. And those that are just entering this industry, take, take these lessons that other people have learned the hard way and apply them to your purchase and make sure you're getting the best deal. But um, we'll jump right in. Um, the two biggest ones that I see on, on every person's purchase agreement almost, PDI, otherwise known as preparation. Um, that is simply the um, process of going through the camper, testing all of the systems, making sure everything's in working order before it goes to the customer. Uh, another one is freight. Uh, everyone pays freight, guys. That's, it, it is what it is. I'm sure you've um, been passed on, the, on a you know, uh, highway by a semi carrying 10 cars, right? that dealership that's receiving those 10 vehicles gets to delegate that transportation fee across 10 units. Whereas in the RV industry, it's very different. Each one of these RVs is individually transported and the cost of doing so, especially depending on the region, uh, could be astronomical. And if that were to be a surprise when you walk in, uh, well, well, again, we'll, we'll go over that here soon, but. Um, uh, P PDI, pre-delivery inspection. Mm -hmm. So you, you hit on that one a little bit. Um, and, and part of the reason that's a hidden fee or, or some dealers require it and some don't, uh, could you could you explain that one a little bit better? You and I were talking about it a little bit before the show. Uh, RV wholesalers, we don't we don't uh, require that fee. And why do some, why do some don't, why do some do? Well, of course, well, it's, it's greed. To, mm -hmm. to answer that as simple as, as I can, it's greed. When you are buying a new RV, Every dealership will will t they're they're supposed to test all the functions, all the features, make sure water's running through the camper, mm -hmm. make sure the hot water heater lights, make sure that the uh, I mean everything, everything is tested. We're essentially camping in it for a couple hours, um, give or take, you know, other than sleeping in it, of course, to make sure that everything is in working order. The problem with it being a hidden fee or something that you are going to be subject to is that, guys, if I find anything wrong with this camper 
the manufacturer pays me to fix these things, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they're, so, so for me to say, you owe me $1,500 for this process is simply double dipping. It's simply saying, and that's even if they did prep the camper. Uh, I do know of some dealerships that have been caught not doing so. They just charge you the, the fee and, and get you out the door. Un, but for those that are still prepping it correctly, they're getting a huge kickback from the manufacturer that built it or uh, had those flaws from the manufacturer, uh, you know, you know, floor line. And then they're getting that from the customer as well. It's, it, you're not supposed to be subject to that, guys. It's something that is done behind the scenes. You're buying a new camper. Um, but why we're making it a topic of conversation is mm -hmm. because dealerships, once you get into the closing room, and you question that because it wasn't part of the negotiation process. It wasn't Correct. part of that price that you were being told over the phone or seeing online. They almost make it seem like it's your fault, it, right? Be, because it was an advertised price. They got you in the door with the advertised price and now their out the door price is different. Well, and, and, but this <clears throat> one specifically too, I've actually heard um, stories from customers saying that the, the salesman or the, or the finance manager, whatever, they would, they would put it back on the customer. They would say, well, w what do you want your new camper to have leaks? What, what, what do you not want us to go through? Do you want a broken? You're buying a brand new camper. It better not leak. It better not have issues, right? These, these are, it, it's almost like a, like a scare tactic to make you subject to these fees. That is why I wanted to make it a point of conversation for this week's uh, podcast is simply to say that you should not be subject to them. And the second that you use this information and apply it towards your purchase and, and have knowledge behind that as to what it is, why you should not be subject to it, and then you threaten to walk out the door, I promise you that dealership will remove that, that itemized fee, right? I, or, or just not even deal with the dealership that was dishonest with you in the first place. Well, that's what I would prefer them yeah. to do, right? Yeah. If, if they were willing to take advantage of you during the sale, I, I just tell those people, imagine what your experience after the fact would be when you need them to take care of your camper, when you need them for service and warranty work. Unfortunately, I'm not going to, to speak for anyone, but I, that's what I would personally do. We had an agreed a price over the phone. I signed my name to something. I show up and now is when I'm being told about these things? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. I'm sorry, there's, there's too many other people to buy an RV from that would be happily um, willing to earn my business and more transparent during that process. Yeah, absolutely. So um, another good one like I touched base with is, is freight. Yeah. Um, I, I, anything you have data <clears throat> with the freight? Uh, a freight is, is kind of a mandatory thing, unfortunately, just because it costs money, as everybody knows, with eggs, milk, uh, I mean, just everything that you mm -hmm. consume on a daily basis, it costs money to ship those things throughout the country. So, uh, you know, 90% of campers are made in, in, in Indiana where the Forest River factory, is where most of the factories are. So it costs money to ship things to the dealerships. And just like Josh had mentioned with a car, they put 15 cars on a, on a tractor trailer and they ship it and they can mitigate that cost to all those cars at once. Whereas a trailer, they put it on the back of a on a truck and they ship them one at a time. So if you're in Ohio, like we are, um, that cost is small. Whereas if you're in Florida or California, that cost is much higher. So some dealerships will work it directly into their advertised price. So now instead of $10,000, that camper will be 15, you know, cause it costs $5,000 to ship that camper to California. Mm -hmm. And some will just say, well, yeah, it costs, our advertised price is 10,000, but you know, it costs us 5,000 to ship it out to California. So you're going to have to pay that or we'll just sell it to the another, next person down the, the road that wants it. Um, and, and I mean, unfortunately, like that is a cost of doing business. That is one of these uh, many things we'll go over that you will be subject to. Mm -hmm. What I've noticed though, the, the only thing I'll add to that is dealers, I don't want to say that they've gotten smart by any means, but if you're in Texas or Florida, for just example, and it costs you, I mean, gas prices now, let's not even talk about it, that's all yeah. I'll say, but gas prices today, to transport a camper from the same place we get it and go a thousand miles south or 1500 miles west, whatever it is, their cost of doing business is astronomically higher. But to get you from going to Ohio to purchase and save that money, they're going to not include that in their advertised price. That's what used to be about about five to 10 years ago, it would just be rolled into their asking price of the RV so mm -hmm. that you would have a better idea. Now, what we're hearing from customers is that these, again, I, I just took a call from a guy in Texas like two weeks ago. Why would I drive to Ohio? I can save $10,000 here. 
it ended up being an apples to apples unit. We both had them in stock. All I could do is, is just apply common sense and try to inform this gentleman the cost of doing business, the difference, everything that is included in that it would be physically impossible for that dealership to compete. Unless it's a used one, unless it's three years old, unless it has damages, unless there's some sort of factor that you do not want to be subject to, it would be impossible for him to compete. That is why, so what I'm seeing now is that freight is now a hidden fee. And when you question it, literally, and this is from a customer, they will ask, I mean, what do you think these just show up on a magic carpet, mm -hmm. right? I, I mean, do you, do you think that they just fly here? They're driven individually. So you're going to pay that no matter where you go, Mr. and Mrs. X, Y, and Z. You're going to pay that no matter where you go. It doesn't matter where you buy an RV. They want you to be subject to these things, but they, they know you're not going to go into the door if all of these things were already in their asking price. That is why we want to make them transparent and we want to give you the tools to be able to negotiate and combat those so that you can get the best deal, period. So I, d I do want to pause for a second and talk about the term hidden fees because some dealerships hide them and don't tell you until you're at the door ready mm -hmm. to pick up and that's where they would be hidden fees whereas some dealerships will tell you this is our fees up the front. Our fees cost X amount of dollars. They won't change and if they do change, you know, it will give you your money back. It's a refundable deposit, uh, and and that's. I, w I was getting ready to say that um, there, there's a, another part of the segment I wanted to talk about of just how to get the out the door price, and uh, but there a couple other fees I wanted to touch base on. Um, environmental fees. That's that's a funny one. Um, tire replacement. That's even more comical. Um, Two, two stories I'll just tell real quick. I environmental coatings, for anyone that's ever purchased a, a new boat, there is such thing as a coating because it's going into the body of water of living organisms, right? So it's going to help deter the building materials and things that are toxic from, from affecting the wildlife. That doesn't exist in this industry, but unfortunately, like the dealers that sell boats and campers, they're getting away with that. I've seen as much as $2,900. And you don't question it because it's a, oh, this is our state regulation, or this is this is mandatory of per the state. It's really not. It does not exist in this industry. You should not be subject to that. Now, you may not come across that one all the time, um, as well as the tire replacement. I, I literally had a customer last year was uh, comparing myself and a gentleman from Florida. Mine was in stock, his was ordered, and after the six months that the gentleman had waited, you know, due to all of the supply chain issues and things like that, when he showed up to pick it up, that was one of, of on top of all of the other fees we've gone over that I warned him about, the tire replacement. They literally told this guy that the tires are no good once they come from Indiana to Florida. So he was being charged $1,299 for a new set of tires. <laughs> I promise you, I will bet any amount of money that the tires were never replaced. Those are the tires that came from Indiana that were specifically uh, put on that camper from you know, on the factory line. So, guys, don't don't be subject to these things. That's the point we're trying to get across. Use use this video. Use use the research and information we're giving you. I'm sorry to do your own research and make sure you're getting the best deal. Um, a couple other ones though that would be mandatory things that are state regulated federally regulated things like that would you would you touch base on a couple of those things yeah so title fee is a big one um, it costs money uh, when the camper comes from the manufacturer it comes with a certificate of origin mm -hmm. if i'm correct right. um, and it costs money for the state or for the dealership and the state to process that into a title so a title fee is a common one that is mandatory set by the state and the federal government. Did you say like average cost of that? Uh, I believe it's $45 for the state of Ohio. Okay, cool. um, and that is state regulated. So it, um, it, as a, if you're in the state of Ohio and you go to a dealership and they're like, yeah, we have a title fee of $90. Well, that's double what the state ma regulates. So why would you pay double what mm -hmm. the state regulates? Only pay the 45. And, and I do know in some states it may be, I think New Jersey is closer to like $600, right? At yeah. least again, from my experience, at least shop around like the two dealers and, and see what their fees are. I, we've just seen inflation on those simply, yeah. simply because it's forced regardless. So are the other ones that we've already covered they're trying to do everything they can to get the money out or, of your pocket. Or so. worse, just call the state title department and ask them how, oh, much, is, yeah. Yeah, how much is a title yeah. fee. Absolutely. Um, uh, another one's documentation fee. It costs money to uh, you know, get the camper to the dealership and process that documentation because there's warranties that go in your name. 
There's the title, which is another one. Um, you know, they have to pay those people. So ask how much the documentation fee is, uh, because there is a fee towards that. They do have to pay those people. Um, and normally those are set pretty standard to transfer all the warranty stuff into your name. Um, so just ask, ask how much it is. And if you get something that's like $1,500 or something like that, that's normally outrageous. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, just ask those fees and normally they won't hide those things. But if they do, obviously that's a giant red flag for you as a customer. Like, mm -hmm. why won't you tell me what your fees are? If you're hiding them from me, then obviously you're not proud of them. And if you're not proud of them, then something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and uh, I would say the last thing that you will see on the bill of sale that you will be subject to sales tax, unless mm -hmm. you're one of those lucky folks that have an LLC or a, a home base in Montana. Uh, sales tax is unavoidable. Death and taxes. Those are the two certain things in this lifetime. So um, and they're not going to inflate those. It's a percentage. But all of the other things that we've already gone over, if prep is $1,500, if freight is $5,000, if environmental coding fees is $1,200, tire replacements $1,200, dock, title, you're getting, you're paying sales tax on all of those things. So though they can't inflate it, the dollar amount you're paying to the state and feds are, are absolutely inflated. We don't want to give them any more of our hard earned dollars than what they already take from us on a day to day basis. So just just do your research. Please understand that there are fees you're going to be subject to and, and fees that you should not be. And with taxes, if you're buying on a state, make sure you ask if the taxes are included in the outdoor pricing. So um, like with us being in Ohio, we don't have to collect taxes on I think North Dakota is one we don't have to. There, there's only like certain states that we reciprocate yeah. with, right? And and even some of the, but, but so uh, you, you actually bring me to another topic, if you will, mm -hmm. and that is asking for the out the door price. Not yeah. only asking, but get it in writing. Mm -hmm. That is, the, you guys, you have no idea what we do deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. If we had hair, uh, I, I'd pull it out again and, and I'd look the way I did. These customers, it's not your fault, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, never, it's never the customer that's lying to us. It's simply another dealership that is misinforming them or trying to, as you said, I'm not proud of my fees. No. We're going to do everything we can to get you in the door, to travel to us six hours away. Once I got you in my door, I, I, now I have you. You're at my mercy. And then I can, I can sp turn the tables on you. Um, and, and use all of those other terrible things that have been told to customers that have informed me of what's going on out there. So, um, but how to do that is, is as easy as, uh, so I mean, most everyone uses DocuSign right now or some sort of an e-sign uh, formatting uh, mm -hmm. app application. It is as easy as just giving them your email, your, the information that they need to process that and to be able to send it to you and get every single itemized line in writing. Make sure it's got the dealership's name on it. Make sure it's got your name on it. Make sure it has a VIN number on it, okay? Right now, that is the only way to be certain that you're not wasting your time. And unfortunately, in this industry, if the deal looks too good to be true, it, I mean, is it ever? Sometimes it is, but most of the time it's not. Most of the time. So um, you had brought up a good point um, as far as seeing all of these things. What is technically a hidden fee? What is, again, I like to refer to as it being a surprise, mm -hmm. right? One of these ways that you can avoid all of this process entirely is simply asking what the out the door price is and what their fees are, okay? Make them tell you what the itemized line is of each and every fee. Uh, question those fees. Well, I, I've never heard of that before. I'll have to get back to you. M try to call them out on these things. But before you even consider traveling to the dealership, especially if it's over, let's say, an hour away, get it in writing. It, it costs you nothing. It's no harm or, or uh, uh, work, if you will, to the dealership or the salesman you're working with. It's as easy as, you know, everyone's using DocuSign. Everyone's used eSign at this mm -hmm. point. It is as easy as getting a purchase agreement sent to you electronically or simply PDF to your email that just simply states, here's the dealership, here's the camper I'm buying. Make sure it also has a VIN number if they claim it to be in stock. Okay, we'll at least touch base on that real quick. But make sure it has all of the options, the exact same camper that you contacted them in, in you know, regards to and make sure that all of their itemized fees and lines are all included in that price and go as go a step further for me 
if, if they claim not to have any fees, okay? At this point, I think you're going to get a lot more honesty out of the uh, salesperson than what you would have in, during the initial uh, inquiry. But at this point, if they still claim to not have any fees, make them put something in the purchase agreement that says your deposit is refundable immediately if even a dollar is added to that price in which you are agreeing to. When they don't, and I'll save you some time, they won't, you know that that deal does not exist. Yeah, you, yeah. you know that you no longer have to waste your time to go to that specific dealer, and now you can continue to shop elsewhere for a business that not only wants to earn yours, but that is going to be more transparent and helpful during the sale. If, if it's that hard to get these hidden fees and these costs associated with doing business with them out of them during the process of negotiation, Imagine relying on them after the fact to get service and warranty work done, to get parts ordered, to even have questions answered. It's going to be a nightmare. So um, we, we ask you guys, please continue to do your research. Um, also, what I really enjoy too is seeing all the questions you guys have. That's what led us to doing this style of video this week. We're getting a lot of people that are just starting to look. A lot, a lot of educated customers are coming out of the woodworks and buying right now. They know the prices are only going up. They know the interest rates are only going up. Campers are resilient. They're going to find a way. But right now, a lot of people are purchasing to avoid all of those things. Um, but so again, we're just trying to help you get the best deal and make sure you know who you're working with um, during that time. So get it in writing, okay? Um, make sure the salesman say, signs it too. Mm, sure. You know, if, if you're ta if you come to another dealership and you're like, yeah, I was talking to um, Joe Snuffy over at dealership A, and they had, they had this camper there, and there's no signature at the bottom of it. You know, it may look like they're they're. It's just some random person is just talking to you. So make sure those salesman signs it too. I know with every one that I send to a customer, it has my name at the bottom of it. So, you know, I'm proud of what I sign yeah. and what I send to a customer because I know that my fees aren't going to change. The camper's not going to change. All of the options that are on it are there. I, I know what I have and I'm proud of what I do. Mm -hmm. And if that other dealership's not willing to do it or whoever you talk to is not willing to do that, then they're hiding something. And you, and you as, I know me as a consumer, I want to be protected from that and you should be too and that's what you're wanting to look at and that's the entire well, and, point of this and this should be fun yeah this 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 should be fun the process should be easy it should be fun you're getting exactly what you want you're getting the best price for it you're get all of these things should be fun there is nothing worse than either seeing a a, a flyer going in there and buying that camper and it, it be nothing but you know misleading information or having it picked out you and your family and little Jimmy's in the back seat you guys are going to the camper to, to pick it up or going to the dealership to, to buy and pick up that camper he's already got his bunk bed picked out all of a sudden you go into the closing room and that's when they give that stuff to you now Jimmy's crying you and the wife are fighting on the way home you have to start this process all over again and now you're afraid to do it because mm -hmm. of what could happen just just avoid it altogether. Camping is one of the most fun and memorable things I've ever personally experienced. That's why we've done it all of my life. Just keep it that way. A lot of these people though only have interest in getting the credit card out of your wallet or try to make a quick sale. So don't don't make it as easy for them as what it could be. Make sure that they're they have your best interest in mind uh, more importantly. So but um, a, a couple other topics um, that I do just want to brush over. A um, little bit more of a shorter conversation on this one, but trade-ins. Um, trade, it's, it's an interesting conversation. It is, it's tough right there, now too. There's a lot of factors involved. And I'll, I, I, I'd like to give a couple bullet points and I'd like to hear what you're seeing as well with your customers. But um, right now, I mean, make no mistake, the, tra the, the used market is not only very um, saturated, it's also still fairly inflated, right? Last year, for those of you that ordered a camper, um, you know that it took a pretty long time to procure that RV. Some, especially with like motorized, for example, I've never seen wait times take that long. I just, I haven't under any circumstance. And, um, and I've been here all of my life. So it was very trying, it was very difficult. Um, I'm still getting people just, uh, just get, get off the topic here slightly, just a little bit, but I'm still getting people that call in and ask, you know, hey, this is the model I want. You know, I'll say, I'll say a 2023 Rockwood. That's the one I want. Do you have a used one? only reason that you would inquire about a new one and then ask if I have a used one is if you're shopping on a budget. And I, I love those shoppers because 
and it, well, especially right now, it makes it so easy for the conversation of, guys, you could buy this one today for the price it is, or you can go buy one that someone paid way too much for last year or the year before, and they're trying to find someone else to get them out of that mistake that they have made because all the hidden fees, because of the inflation, because of the greedy dealerships. It make it almost makes no sense, right? We're we're seeing it come down. This isn't yeah. gonna last forever, so this information may be outdated here within the next six months. That's fine. We want to see trade-ins get back to normal. We want to start um, seeing these numbers make more sense. But still, right now, um, I, I know RV wholesalers. We're very particular on the used campers we accept. Um, and we also have three companies that we work with to delegate most of those pieces to anyhow. Bottom line is where I wanted to kind of get to this is it is still in your best interest to sell outright for those of you considering doing so. You can order a camper, uh, Rockwood, you know, taking a couple months to build right now. You can order a new one. It's going to be here in time for spring. You don't have to pay the, the cost difference. However, that gives you plenty of time to sell yours and put all of the money that dealer X, Y, and Z would make into your pocket and get out of it and start on a better foot with a new one. So. Um, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, Trade-ins are, are tough too when it comes to building your deal and how to maneuver it. Um, you know, with, with a dealership that is not, or that just is wor is worried about getting your, your deal and just wants to, you know, take you to the cleaner, I guess would be the way to put it. Um, they're going to say, you know, you have a camper in the, in the blue book, the, the NADA book that everybody uses, says that hey that camper's worth ten thousand uh they're gonna say we're gonna give you 12 for it and you're like man that's a great deal I, I, well and, and how much did that happen last year it, it right? happened a lot people were trading in because they were getting more than what they, they yeah. paid for it now now that was during the shortage though that's when new rvs were so far out for for building time like i said we're starting to see a lot of that yeah. climb back down now right but but it, it sounds like you're getting into the the topic i wanted to focus on too which was like changing numbers around yeah. to make it seem like you got a better yeah. deal is that so yeah please continue. yeah so so what they'll do is you know that camper's worth 10 we'll give you 12 for it and this happened a lot during covid mm -hmm. which we hate saying that word because it's over now and you know so they'll we'll give you 12 for it and the customer's like man that is awesome mm -hmm. but they're the, the the new camper is just so much expense so much more expensive so they'll they'll go shop around then they'll come to you know we'll, we'll use us as an example they'll come to rv wholesalers they're like yeah we have a trade in they're like and we're like, okay, well, that camper's worth 10 in the book, but, you know, we're going to give you eight. Well, that's that. I just can't do that. You know, dealership A is going to give you 12. Well, I understand that, uh, Mr. Customer, but, uh, you know, we're only going to get, we're, the new camper that you're buying from us is worth, you know, $4,000 less, or we're, we're buying it for $4,000 less than dealership A. So in reality, the deal is exactly the same. The bottom line on that deal is exactly the same as dealership A, so you're not out any money. Well, and and actually, I so I'm glad you said the word the the term bottom line. Yeah, that's what I wanted to focus on too. And got, to give you like a like paint a better picture, I'm selling a camper for fifty. Dealer X, Y, and Z are selling it for sixty nine. Huge difference, obviously. They're going to give you twenty five for yours. I and and I'll. There, there's another piece of that, but they're going to give you 25 for for yours. I'm giving you 17.5 for it. It may not sound more appealing, but it's a wholesaler compared to a retailer. You're not going to get a, a, a retail trade-in value and then buy the camper wholesale. And that's mm -hmm. why I said trade. You know, sell it outright. Why do I deserve to make even three grand on the camper when you can put that in your pocket? It would save mm -hmm. you the tax break anyway. Mm -hmm. But bottom line, if you were to put camper X, Y, and Z, and what they were giving you for the trade, subtract it, who's got the best deal? Yep. It's always going to be a wholesaler no matter what. However, one thing I challenge you to do though, if anybody is, I'm, I mean, we're going to use ourselves as an, as an example. I'm not trying to plug ourselves in. I'm not trying to say uh, we, we set the example, we, we set the standard. I think that's fair to say, but I do want to make sure that um, we do not focus on, on necessarily us, it's just in general of, of, of how to safely buy an RV, but in our experiences and in, in what we know, guys, I'll, I'll, I'll ask that customer every time, do me a favor, go to, your, go to your, the dealership that was offering you 25, ask them if they'll buy that camper outright from you without doing business with them. 100% mm -hmm. of the time, it question, the answer is no. 
It's because all they have to do is move numbers around. Their $19,000 profit margin compared to my $5,000 profit margin, they got all these things to play with. So truly, you're not getting a better deal. The, the unfortunate thing, though, that I see and what does make us different is taking advantage of the next person. If that camper is books for $20,000 and you're getting 25 out of it, guess what? Now dealer X, Y, and Z have to sell it for 30. And the person that buys that at a very quickly depreciating rate will never be able to sell that camper to anyone else again. And that's one thing I personally cannot afford being that this is my family's business. We need you to come back to us again. We need you to come uh, to, to send us your friends and families. We need you guys to trust us and build that relationship. Well, and it's not, it's not only that. We want you to sit out next to the fire just like this underneath the awning of that camper and enjoy it and not say, man, we got taken to the cleaner zone. I hate this and I hate camping. You'll never, yeah. you, 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 for one, every time you look at that camper, you're, you're going to have us, you're yeah. going to be upset with yourself and yeah. your decision. The other thing is you're never going to come back to that, that dealership again mm -hmm. after you find out what's going on behind the scenes. We just so anyway, uh, things to take from that. Look at the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Again, ask them if they'll just buy that outright from you if you were not to do business with them. Simply understand that moving numbers around is not giving you the best deal. It's just it's just apples and oranges at that point, and unfortunately, is not going to benefit anybody uh, during your your process or the person after you. But um, I, I, I would say the last topic, Dalton, I wanted to touch base with would be financing. Um, now, we are going to bring on a uh, co-host next week. His name's Dallas Henry. It's our finance manager. Um, he is going to get into a lot more of the specifics. But we keep getting asked um, about financing through dealerships specifically. Um, this is where I'm going to focus on us because there's not another dealership that does it to a T what we do when it comes mm -hmm. to financing. Um, and, and I kind of tell my customers to look at it as a game, right? So if, if you were to purchase a large retail purchase of any kind, boat, car, motorcycle, RV, airplane, whatever, right? If you finance through that dealership, and they all want you to do it, right? Everyone watching this knows that every dealership wants you to finance through them, right? Have you ever questioned why? Well, we're, we're going to tell you. It's because we're getting back thousands of dollars from that bank that we've given your business to. Uh, it, it's called reserve money. It's called kickback money. And what I'm supposed to do is put that in my pocket. That way we can have well, concrete. Well, and don't so, spoil it. Let them, let them tune in next week and learn about it, man. Well, like I said, we, I, I do want to get into more specifics of what the, what rates look like, how to, how to play the game more specifically right mm -hmm. but but what i do want to make sure is that when you i mean because this is this is you know part of how to buy an rv mm -hmm. right that's a huge factor in getting the best deal and 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 obviously paying for the camper right someone's mm -hmm. got to pay for the camper right um and there's not as many cash buyers as there used to be but cash is also not king that's why these fine these dealerships they want you to finance with them. Um, there, there's a big chain of dealerships. They have a little over 100 locations, for those of you that, are, that know who I'm talking about. They make more money by financing your purchase than they do by selling you a product. Hence the concrete lots, hence the marble floors, hence the, guys, this is what, what makes us different. And then, and then I think that's, that would be a good place to stop for next week's video is we, we want you to finance for the sole fact that we are giving that money to you. We are, and we, our profit margins are very minuscule compared to the people that we compete with. So instead of cutting into that and giving Dalton a bloody nose for a better deal, you finance with us. And you, and you simply receive all of that kickback money, which literally is thousands of dollars. Uh, it, it gets more the, the higher your purchase price is. We give that to you and we're, robbing Peter we're paying Paul right now th there is a, 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 a games even in and, and, and sorry you know th this will be the spoiler alert I guess but even my cash buyers do this it, there's a game there's a way to get the best deal by taking advantage of someone else's cash so um, please tune in with us next weekend we'll go over that a lot more into detail um, and for anybody like I said has additional questions comments things that uh, topics that they want us to talk about please do so in the comment section.